Hey, this is Rob from Producer Tech, and I'm going to take you through some of the new features in Machina version 2. In this first movie, I'm just going to give you an overview of the software updates, going through all of the main sections and showing you how to access them from the awesome new flagship Machina Studio controller. Then in the next movie, I'll go into more detail on a few of the significant improvements concerning modulation and automation. First up then, you can see from the main window that the overall layout hasn't changed. So we still have the browser on the left side, the arrangement section at the top, the patterns section below that, and the modules section in the middle. And all of these have the same basic functionality. The main difference is that many of the limitations here have been lifted. For example, although you still only have 16 sounds per group, you now have as many groups as you like. Adding extra groups just places them into another bank, which can be accessed easily from the hardware by pressing the select button and then using the buttons above the LCD. And you can easily delete groups by holding shift and erase and then hitting the group switches. Editing of multiple groups is now possible with this version though, so it's even quicker to delete a load of groups using the software, where you can hold down shift and then click on a different group to select a whole range and then hit delete to get rid of the whole lot. Selecting multiple groups or sounds has lots of other editing benefits too, which I'll show you shortly. Another useful thing about the arrangement section is that when I delete a group from the top of the stack, they all shift up, which is a nice way of keeping things organized and saving time. You can see the groups change color when I do this, as I'm using the default colors. But if you've chosen a color for the group manually yourself, then it will retain that color when it moves. Moving into the arrangement section alongside then, you can see one obvious welcome change here is that you've now got a bar ruler at the top. So you have a clear indication of the timing of scenes and patterns within it. So I can see immediately that this scene is four bars long and has a four bar pattern playing in this group and a one bar looping pattern playing in this one. Furthermore, the playback and looping facility in this section has been greatly expanded, with the scene selection and looping now being independent. So if I select a scene now, the focus shifts to that scene allowing me to edit it, but the entire arrangement is still looping. However, double-clicking the grey strip below the scene now loops just that scene. But what you can do now is drag the grey bar around, as well as trim its edges to change the loop length. And this can also be done from the hardware by holding down shift and restart, and then rotating the jog wheel. Then, holding down the left or right buttons below the wheel as well, adjust the loop start or end position on its own. Rotating the jog wheel without holding any buttons shifts the playhead back and forth. And pressing and rotating, as with all edits, makes the scrubbing finer. These improvements make the whole arrangement section so much more user-friendly when creating songs with Machina in standalone mode, where editing events or parameter modulation in a small part of a scene is now much easier. Heading down to the pattern editor now, you can probably see the main difference here is that all of the pattern buttons have disappeared. This is because patterns are now selected from the software using the pattern manager, opened with this downward arrow, which is essentially like pattern mode on the hardware, in that it shows you the patterns mapped onto pads, each in its own bank of 16. Deleting patterns can be done easily from the hardware or software, only this time the others stay in place, which is different to the previous version of the software, where they all moved down and the numbers changed accordingly. So the pattern numbers no longer relate to the pad number. Changing the pad a pattern relates to is easy now too, as you can just drag them around in the manager and rename them as you like. The arrangement area has a similar scene manager, allowing you to edit and delete individual or entire banks of scenes, as well as change the pads they're mapped to once again. Also new to the pattern editor is pad view mode, turned on with the switch at the top of the sounds list. This allows you to see all of your sounds as they appear on the hardware, rather than in a long list. And it allows you to quickly view and change settings like the choke and link groups the pads are assigned to. And this is again where the multiple selection feature comes in handy, allowing you to select lots of pads and set them to the same choke group, so that each sound will mute when another sound in that group is played. In case you're not sure, the master and slave options at the end mean that you can set a pad to slave to prevent it from controlling other pads. So a choke group slave won't mute other sounds in the choke group when you play it, but will be muted by master sounds in that choke group. 
and similarly with pad linking, hitting a slave pad won't trigger the other pads in that link group. But that pad will be played when any link group masters are hit. Improvements to editing events include a few extra switches around the outside, such as the one that instantly turns the grid off for freely editing events. There's also an erase tool for deleting events. You've also got a grid size option here, and that's not to do with event editing directly, but allows you to set the amount by which the pattern size, loop position, and playback head scrubbing adjusts. Set to quick, the pattern length is adjusted in whole bars, whilst the playback head scrubbing and loop position changes in smaller divisions of a bar. Editing events from the studio controller is even quicker now, as you can hold down the note button above the jog wheel and then rotate it to transpose selected events up and down. Or you can hold down nudge to change their position. The nudge amount is half the step amount as default, but can be changed to a smaller value on the grid screen if you like. Alternatively, you can just hold down shift and nudge to override the setting. Selecting events to edit in keyboard mode from the hardware is done in the same way as in version 1 by choosing the start and end points and range of MIDI notes. Only you have a dedicated events button in the transport section for activating when selecting events, and the two LCD screens show you the entire pattern and a zoomed in version while you're doing it, with buttons 5 and 6 zooming the right display in and out and scrolling it left and right respectively. Plus, when the pattern's playing, the follow option set with the button above the left display means that the right display always remains focused on whatever's playing. So the displays on the controller are actually better than the displays you get in the software, making editing from the hardware alone really easy. Like in the arrangement section, the playback options in the software pattern editor are much more flexible once again, as you can set the playhead position just by clicking on the bar ruler with the mouse. Additionally, zooming is now done by dragging the edges of the scroll bar, which is a nice change. And following is turned on and off using the switch at the top of the window. The central modules section has now become a dual mode area, with the two switches on the left alternating between modes. Modules, or plugins view, is where the instruments and effects can be viewed and edited. This is much like in version 1, only now you select the plugin from a list on the left and can have as many plugins as you like for sounds, groups, or the master channel, rather than only four. Adding instruments or effects is done by clicking on the plus symbol and then choosing from the list. Or from the hardware, you click Shift and Browse, which enters internal browsing mode, bringing up the same options there. Alternatively, any effects can be dragged across from the new browser. In the second mode, the strip displays the channel properties of the focus sound, group, or master channel. This means the audio and MIDI routing, the groove, and also macro controls, which are now available for sounds, groups, and the master. Plugin and channel mode have dedicated switches on the studio controller. So for example, if I wanted to route a whole bunch of sounds in this group to a send effect now, then I just hold down select, then turn on multi, and hit the sounds I want to route to the send effect. Then I go into channel mode, select output, and then you can see the aux options here. So I just choose my send effect for aux 1 and turn up the level. Then each of those sounds is routed to that send effect. Back in the software now, it's even easier for me to view my auxiliary channel routings thanks to a brand new display area. Access by clicking on the faders switch up in the top corner here. And that's the mixer view. This can show you the groups in your project or the sounds in the selected group, toggled by double-clicking any group number. Then you can easily make changes to the levels or panning. And if you activate the switches on the left, you can see the input and output routing, plugins and auxiliary routings too. So here we have those AUX1 settings I just created. And you can see how making changes to them now is easy from this window too. Incidentally, creating a send effect is even simpler now too, where I just choose an empty sound slot in this group I've named send effects, and then from either arrangement or mixer view, I just add an effect, like this new plate reverb, after which that sound slot is automatically added to the routings options within the software. 
As you can see, plugins are now shown at the bottom of the mixer window as well here, with enlarged graphics. So if you prefer to, you can edit them from here instead of in arrangement view. If I minimize the mixer with this switch, then it's even easier to see. Then, even when a sound has lots of effects on it, it's quick and simple to make changes to it. And the sample has an improved display too, which makes it nicer to work with. And even larger native instruments like Massive have customized graphics for this section. Finally, the entire browser section has been redone, with two tabs at the top for changing between files mode, to locate samples of other sounds on your computer, and a library. As before, you have switches for each type of preset or file, beginning with the largest project and ending up with the smallest individual samples. Types and subtypes are even easier to select in the software now, with these lists showing all categories. And there are new graphics in this section too. So if I choose an individual instrument to load like Massive, then the browser switches to just presets for that instrument. So that's given you an overview of the main updates in Machina version 2. In the next movie, I'll be going into more detail with a few more new features by showing the changes to modulation and automation handling. See you then.